Hey everybody, Fide Master Dennis Montecruces here, and we continue now in our series on the Rui Lopez. We're up to episode 28, and this one is going to be dedicated to Marshall Gambit sidelines. So we're making big progress now, and of course the Marshall Gambit begins with the move d5. Uh, something I just want to mention, I'm not going to cover it at all, but um, for your interest, so some of you know about the uh, Gajewski Gambit, or Gajewski Gambit, I guess would be, um, that is in the Chigorin. So after, let's say, d6, h3, knight a5, bishop c2, c5, uh, or not, not c5, but d5 there. Well, um, Gajewski, although a couple of people played before him, has recently come up with this. Knight a5, bishop c2, and now d5. In fact, this was played twice this year, once by Gajewski and once by the uh, Greek Grandmaster Stelios Halkius, and... Um, between the two guys, they uh, they got a point and a half with black out of the two games. So might be worth keeping an eye on this. I mean, it's early days and, you know, barely been touched, but hey, it might be interesting. So um, something for you to consider as well. Um, at any rate, we're going to stick to the marshal the rest of the way. All right. Um, actually, one more mar anti marshal. Um, so last time I looked at moves besides C3 that white could play. So we talked about D3. Um, d4, h3, and a4. So this anti marshal begins with allowing the marshal and then not taking it but playing the move d4. So um, just to give you an overview of what we'll talk about today. So we'll look at that and then we'll look at um, the, the accepted marshal, but e takes d5 and now e4, so the Steiner gambit, and, um, and then knight takes d5, knight e5 takes, takes, and then both knight f6 and bishop to b7. So we've got quite a full plate here. Uh, next time we'll look at the Marshall main lines, but let's jump in here, come back to this position with the d4 anti-Marshall. Against this, black has two perfectly adequate ways to continue. One is e takes d4, the other is d takes e4. So you can take whichever pawn you like. On e takes d4, white plays e5, knight e4, and now Generally, c takes d4 is played, but uh, the Russian, I think, Grandmaster Belov uh, has tried knight takes d4 from time to time. Against this, black should bravely grab the pawn. Uh, knight takes e5, and if f3, then c5. And it appears that it's white who has to fight for equality in this, uh, in this variation. So um, that's uh, all I'm going to say about this. So you know about it. It exists. But um, it's uh, it's not really that great for white. Um, if knight to c2, I believe the uh, solution there is just to play c4. Um, yeah, and if f takes c4, well, that's, that's all you need to know about that. Okay, so c takes d4 is the normal move here. Now bishop f5. And here, a couple of possibilities for white. Um, knight c3, I guess, is the, the main line, although h3 was tried in a fairly high-profile game a couple of years ago. They basically come to the same sort of thing. So sooner or later, white often plays knight c3. This knight on e4 is very strong, so this at least eliminates it. On the other hand, the benefit of this capture is that unlike a regular open Rui, there's no open c file, so black doesn't have to worry about pressure on the file there. Uh, and from here, black plays queen d7, generally followed by knight to a5 and knight to c4, and this is equal. Uh, in a game Solskis against Adams, played in Plovdiv in 2010, um, Solskis played h3, queen d7 anyway, knight c3, just the same, so takes, takes, knight a5, bishop to g5, takes, 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 h6, knight f3, and now another standard idea for black, a5. And he's very likely just to play a4. Black had no problems at all, again, um, Solskis Adams drawn in about another 21 moves. Okay, so after d4, e takes d4, to all appearances, is um, just equal. It's also possible to play d takes e4. This is a bit sharper, I think, um, potentially anyway. All right, white will grab on e5. Generally, this is done with a knight, but d takes e5 is also possible. Against this, it uh, looks like the following should equalize for black. So it takes knight to g4, rookie four. So this is the big idea. White's just going to grab the pawn here and hope for the best. Bishop f5. But now, if rookie one, simply bishop to c5 is pretty awkward for white. Black is better here. 
So rook e2 is the better choice, but now rook a to d8, obviously threatening the bishop. Knight b to d2, bishop d3, rook e1, bishop c5. So you can see that black is just enormously active here, and as things work out, white needs to return the pawn anyway. Knight to d4, knight g takes e5, and the position is equal. So de doesn't really amount to much if black reacts uh, accurately. Instead, knight takes e5 is a bit more interesting. So takes, 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 knight to d7. Now, if white grabs the pawn straight away, black can equalize in a line given by uh, Suat Italic, rook d4, knight e6, and you just keep chasing it. If the rook went to d5, you play bishop to b7. So this looks like a repetition. Alternatively, there's bishop to c2, which is a little bit more dangerous. Knight e5, bishop f4, rook to b8. And now, okay, white can win a pawn here, but if he does it like this, then after rook to d8, black has excellent compensation. Uh, white's extra pawn really, obviously, is not going to play any factor for a long, long time. It's not going to be easy to make a, a past h pawn here. And white is, uh, is behind in development, and uh, black has a very nice bishop here. So uh, no reason for black to, to even feel like he has to play for a draw here. He has as much chance to play for a win as white does, at least. So bishop to f4 is the better move. Bishop d6, takes, 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 takes. All right, this occurred in a game between Morozovic and Shirov in Moscow in 2006. Um, again, though, black's counterplay is, is sufficient. Rook to d8. If knight a3, then rook to d2 is terrific. So um, white played king f1. And now with rook to d1, rook e1. Okay, f6, rook e3, rook d1, rook e1, takes, takes. Bishop f5, knight a3, check, check, check. And the game is agreed drawn. And that game has been copied twice since then. Or maybe not copied, maybe the, the players independently discovered it, but... This has occurred three times. Uh, the other games they agreed to a draw, slightly different positions, but essentially it was this repetition. Okay, so the bottom line then whoops, is that d4 really doesn't promise white anything. Black seems to have two ways of achieving full equality. So let's go on to e takes d5 then. And now before we jump into knight takes d5, there's Steiner's old gambit line e4. And this has never really had a very good reputation, but the game Nakamura Short from the London Chess Classic in 2010, at least for the moment, seems to have just put this out of business altogether. Okay, white grabs, black grabs, and now uh, queen takes f3. It's kind of the classical way of handling it. Black gets uh, some nice looking activity, bishop g4, bishop d6, rook e8. So his pieces are you know, all coming out very fast, going to their best positions. But it is two pawns, and after f3, it's not really clear that black has enough. Um, one classic game in this variation was Fischer-Bernstein from New York 1959. Uh, Fischer was able to slowly um, disentangle his queen side and win the game. Uh, I think white probably has, uh, or white's material advantage is probably worth, worth more than the pawns. But it's playable at any rate. Uh, d4 is the main line and has been for a long time. And white scores very well here, too. But since Nakamura's g3 has done so well, or was, was so powerful and so effective against short, uh, we'll just focus on this. Now, he didn't invent this move, or discover this move, I should say. Uh, it had been played before him, but he really played this, uh, worked it out to a, to a t. So rook e8, d4. Okay, not queen f3, because after bishop c5, now black really is getting a bit too active. Black would be clearly better there, but just d4, okay, bishop to g4, bishop to g5. So he's happy to make some exchanges here. Really what white wants is to get rid of that pawn on f3, but by playing g3 first, he safeguarded it. He's made sure that black has no kingside initiative at all. Queen d6, h3, bishop h5, queen c2. Okay, bishop to g5, knight e4 takes. So Short is doing whatever he can to hold on to that pawn on f3, but it's going to drop sooner or later. Okay, queen f5. So now the threat is just to take on g5. Also, perhaps, well, also, sorry, bishop to d5 is the, the biggest threat, um, but taking on g5 is there too. So rookie one, rookie one, rookie eight, 
and now a very good move, rook to e5. So not letting black put a rook on e2 or obtain any counterplay on the e-file at all. So short swapped, played bishop g6. Okay, there goes that pawn. And now after queen e4, Nakamura is able to finish the job. So maybe black had some small chances, but you know, e6, for example, is a really annoying threat here. And, um, you know, it's hard to see that black really has anywhere near enough for the pawn. But after queen to e4, Nakamura is able to finish very effectively with this check, and then the second check is trading queens. So you might think at first that this isn't so bad. I mean, white's just a pawn up, but the h-pawns look pretty sickly. But the thing is, uh, black is not going to get to the e5 pawn. The f3 pawn is dropping, and, um, well, you'll see it's pretty simple. So f6 takes takes. Bishop to d5. Okay, a5. Uh, the thing is, white is ready to play b4, and then bishop to b7. So that's that's the big problem there. So a5 prevents that, but still, b4, the b5 pawn is still a problem. Takes, takes. Bishop to d3, so um, it's got that protected, but now king h2, bishop c4, check, a3, and with the f pawn dropping, for nothing. Uh, white's going to be up two pawns, again, for nothing, with um, a pretty easy win. So we'll just put the bishop on f3 to keep the king out, bring his king to f4, and then just bring his king over to the queen side, if nothing else, and uh, win pretty trivially. So a great game by Nakamura, and possibly the end, at least at um, the professional level, of e4. Okay, so knight takes d5, knight e5, knight e5, Rook e5. And now we're going to look at Marshall's original knight f6. Later on he discovered c6, which is the main move nowadays, but we'll have to look at that next time, or maybe the next two shows. So it's there's a tremendous amount of theory there. I'm going to have to be very selective, but maybe I can be selective in one show. We'll see. Anyway, we'll look at knight f6, and then bishop to b7. So on knight f6, really the only game you have to know is Capablanca Marshall. I mean, there are a few little tries that Black has um, to deviate from that game, but essentially Capablanca, sight unseen, managed to refute knight f6. I mean, it's a, a fantastic achievement by him. Well, in the game, Capablanca played rook e1, bishop d6, h3, knight g4, queen f3, queen h4, and then d4. This position is still considered to be the main position, in the knight f6 line, but generally speaking, we get to this by a different move order nowadays. White plays d4 here, bishop d6, rook e1, knight g4, h3, queen h4, and queen f3. So that's the official move order these days. Uh, but let's look at some deviations along the way. So first of all, uh, white should not play g3 because then knight h2 is, is rather strong. The problem is that um, White cannot take the knight because queen h4 check and then bishop takes g3 is, is going to be crushing. But if he can't take the knight, then this is just um, great for black. I mean, he's, he's regained his pawn. He's going to play bishop to g4 and put the knight on f3 if he can. Or, at worst, put the knight back to g4. But just h3 is fine. Okay, let's um, get back to Marsh or Capablanca's move order. So this, this, h3, and knight to g4. It's a very tricky little move by Marshall. The problem with taking the knight is that queen h4 check happens. Okay, threatening bishop takes g4, followed by queen h2, queen h1 mate, if the queen moves away. So queen f3, and now bishop h2 check. Okay, if king h1, bishop takes g4 is crushing, but king f1, bishop g4, queen e4, and now bishop f4 is winning as well. g3, queen h2. And now uh, the idea is just to play rook a to e8, queen takes e8, bishop h3 check, or sorry, not bishop h3 check. That wins, but queen h1 mate is even better. So g takes f4, check, and this wins. Uh, this variation is from Alterman. It might, might have been known long before that, but uh, managed. I took a few variations from Alterman's discussion in uh, his, what is it called exactly? Um, the Alterman Guide to Black Gambits, or to Gambits, and it's the second volume on Black Gambits. Um, okay, so um, Queen F3, 
and now queen h4. Okay, so d4 transposes to our main line position, but it's worth noting that rook to e8, which looks tricky, has been known for a long, long time to be a bad move because of bishop to b7, which is itself a pretty spectacular move. The first thing to note is that queen f7 check, which looks crushing, is just garbage because after king h8, there's nothing for white to do. Rook f8, rook f8 is a dead end. So, um, you know, the queen has to move sooner or later, and then queen f2 and queen f1 is made, or queen g2. It's hopeless. So the right move for white here is rook takes f8, rook f8, and let's say queen g4. If queen takes b7, then queen f2 check and queen f1 is made. So queen g4, and now rook e8. So very nice, but again, this has been known for some time, I think. Uh, it's even happened in tournament games. Now, uh, one game went with queen to d1, queen f4, threatening queen h2, and then queen h1 or queen takes g2, or bishop takes g2, checkmate. So g3, now queen e4, threatening mate again, f3, and then queen to d3, and now threats like rook to e2 and bishop f3 are just too much. Also bishop g3 with the idea of rook to e1. So white resigned in a game Loma Rodriguez against Ferran Martos, Played in Tarragona in 2003. So two, 2,000, 2,100 uh, rated players. But it's just basically good analysis. All right. Um, if instead king f1, then Alterman gives uh, the following bit of analysis. Queen e7. Okay, here bishop to e6 is absolutely forced. Now bishop c8, or bishop to d5 for that matter, um, is the strong rejoinder. d3, bishop b6. And here if queen to d1, then bishop to g4 is winning. Because uh, queen g4, there's queen e1 mate. If hg, queen h4 is winning. And if f3, then just bishop to f5 with the ideas of bishop takes d3 check, followed by queen to e1, or uh, bishop to g3, and then queen e1. So black is completely winning here. All right, so after queen h4, again, d4 is the move. Now, from here, Marshall plays knight f2. And again, it's a moment to uh, for white to demonstrate some caution. Queen takes f2 is inaccurate. And the reason is not bishop to g3, which is a, a known blunder. White plays queen f7 check, and it's mate next move. King over, queen takes f8, or rook f7, rook e8. However, the bishop to g3 idea is right. It just has to be prepared with bishop to h2 check first. And this has been known, again, for 90 years. Uh, King f1. Bishop g3. So now, if queen takes f7, rook f7 is check, so there's no rook to e8 mate. Okay, queen to d2, bishop takes h3, g takes h3, queen h3 check, queen g2, takes, takes, and takes. And here, black has a, a nominal material advantage, a very, very slight one, rook and two pawns for a bishop and a knight. But I think the minor pieces are probably a little bit more val uh, valuable here. I suspect if anyone's better at this point, it's probably white, but you know, it's roughly even. Maybe again, white's a little bit better. However, after knight t takes f2, much better than queen takes is to play rook e2, as played by Capablanca. Um, I didn't cover it, but you might wonder, well, why is white playing rook to e1 and then rook to e2? There actually is a reason for it, but uh, I won't bother um, with that. Again, because Capablanca's recipe is just very, very simple. But Rook e2 does exist, but I believe it's considered to be inferior nowadays. All right, in the game, Marshall played bishop to g4, but we should look at bishop takes h3 and knight to g4 as well. So if bishop takes h3, we take knight h3, check, king f1, bishop f4. Um, and here, I think knight to d2 is clearly better for white, as is bishop f4, knight f4, rook e4, g5, knight to d2, King h8, rook a to e1, rook a to d8, and uh, here I think Alterman suggests rook f4 or something like that, but just rook e7 is clearly better for white. Uh, black really doesn't have sufficient compensation. Okay, um, next up is knight to g4, and this is refuted pretty easily. Play g3, queen h3, and you gobble the rook. So it looks scary, but there's just nothing there for black. He's down a rook for two pawns and uh, doesn't have access to enough squares. So white, white just wins there. Finally, there's the game. Bishop to g4, 
hg4, check, here, bishop g3, so threatening mate on h1, rook takes f2, check, takes, and now a good move, bishop to d2. So um, the point of this is that, of course, you could take on f2 and black takes on c1, but then white will have a hard time finishing developing his queen side. So by playing this and then slotting his king on c2, his king is safe, his queen type pieces are safe, and he's going to take care of the rook by playing a4. So a very nice, elegant solution, characteristic of Capablanca at his best. Um, here, c5 is maybe worth a try, but still after dc, black is in big trouble. Uh, Marshall played bishop f2, queen f3, queen g1, bishop to d5, c5, takes, takes, b4. So this is nice. It gives the king another square to hide out on on uh, b3 if need be. So bishop to d6, a4. So here, uh, here come up the reserves. Uh, black's bind has been broken, and since white has a, a material advantage, two pieces for a rook, uh, and his minor pieces are going to prove much more effective than the rook, uh, the game is close to over at this point. So a5, trying to confuse the issue. a b, a b, rook a6, hitting the bishop, takes and takes, and now all of white's pieces are in play. His king is completely safe, and as we'll see, Marshall's king is going to get in trouble pretty quick. Bishop to b4, and b6, so a new problem for white, or for black to worry about. Bishop c3, bishop c3, h6, b7, rook e3, and now bishop takes f7 check and Marshall resigns. If rook takes f7, then b8 makes a new queen and leads to a quick forced mate, while king h7 is just mate to check and mate. So a very, very impressive win by, by Capablanca. Essentially, it's one of those opening sequences where if you just memorize it um, and you're aware of a few little tricks, you're going to get a very, very good position whenever you see knight f6. So knight f6 really can't be recommended. and it's basically disappeared from from play. Bishop to b7 is uh, is more interesting. It's it's not as as uh, you know as uh, incredibly complicated as knight f6. I mean, knight f6, you immediately just dive into the tactics with both feet. Bishop to b7 is a bit more calm. It's uh, it's sounder, I think, less exciting, but um, but but playable. And and again, because it's not all that well known, it's an interesting try. All right, from here, white has two main moves, d4 and queen f3. And I think queen f3 may be the best uh, of the two. All right, so on d4, here, um, queen d7 is, I think, the official main line, but it looks like after knight's d2, knight f4, and now not knight f3, but knight e4, white has a, a clear advantage, in my opinion. So this, I think, is um, not a line that black really wants to go for. So better is bishop to f6 in my view, rook e1, rook e8, bishop to d2. And this is the main line. Uh, a5 has been played in, in some important games, including a, a high-profile battle between, excuse me, between Anand and uh, Hrachik from the Bundesliga in 2002. So that game went like this. So a5, knight a3, b4, knight c2, takes, takes, a4, takes, takes, and knight e3. And black still has a little bit of compensation, but, but white is getting close to consolidating here. It's uh, evident that black will neither regain the pawn nor have much by way of kingside play. So it's just a matter of hoping that the bishops will um, give enough enough uh, activity to, to maintain good drawing chances. In that game, at least, uh, black didn't succeed. So I would say that white's slightly better, but you know, not the end of the world by any means. Another try is c5. On this, I think white can also maintain an edge. So dc5 takes, takes, and now, okay, if bishop to e7, then I think c4 um, clearing c3 for the knight and just grabbing a little bit more space in the center should be enough to keep an edge for white. If queen c8, then knight a3, queen c5, rook to d1, and again, here too, I think white has an edge. All right, finally, and best, I think, for black, there's rook takes e1 check. And this one is um, more interesting. So queen e1, and now b4. So another very good pawn lever 
I think after queen f1, maybe white has just the tiniest of edges, but it really isn't very much at all. Instead, therefore, of the move d4 from here, so from the beginner of this variation, I think maybe queen f3 is the way to go. All right, bishop to d6, bishop takes d5, and now c6. So this has been played in some very high-profile games. There's a, I forget if it's Ivanchuk Kamsky or Kamsky Ivanchuk, or Ivanchuk, I should say, uh, and some other big-name people, too, have been involved in this. Uh, I believe that game, the one involving Kamsky, went like went with rook to e2. After c d5, d4, queen c7, g3, either rook a to e8 or rook f to e8, uh, both have been played. I think short has, in fact, played both of those moves. And uh, I think black has enough here. I think this is enough like a regular martial gambit and uh, a good martial gambit for black. So one of those positions that he should be able to hold. So there's not really a lot by way of uh, attacking prospects for black, but it's very, very difficult to break down the black position and, and to achieve serious winning chances. Instead of rook to e2, maybe rook to e1 is, uh, is worth a shot. So again cd, again d4, again queen c7, again g3, again rook goes to the e-file. Uh, here white plays bishop to e3, and then, well, we'll see a difference. So one reasonable plan for black is to play a5, knight to d2, and b4. And here I think uh, Alterman, for instance, gives rook a to c1, bc3, rook c3, and then the queen moves with compensation. And I think that's right, but what I think white can do to make uh, to offer a serious improvement, a really significant improvement, is the move bishop to f4. Uh, white does not care if black takes twice on f4 because, uh, first of all, black is not going to get to the f pawn, the pawn on f4. Secondly, and this is the most important thing, white is going to achieve a good knight, a very good knight, versus a really pretty lousy bishop ending. That uh, bishop on b7 is not going to have any targets, it's going to bite on the d5 pawn, and even if it switches via c8 or a6 to some other diagonal, it still isn't going to have very much to do. Um, the pawn on a5 is going to be weak, and um, anyway, I, I just think that white is doing really well here. And um, so this, I think, is a, a pretty pretty decent way for white to meet this, this whole gambit with bishop to b7. So in my view, white maintains an edge against... Um, all of the, uh, at least an edge, against all of these side lines. So against e4, I think white is clearly better, at the Steiner variation that is. Against knight f6, Marshall's original move, I think white is clearly better. And even against bishop to b7, I think white, in this way, maintains a nice edge. On the other hand, the anti marshal with d4, I think, promises nothing. So we'll move on next time to the main lines, and I'll see you then.